God, speak through me so others may hear and help me, help me, help me. Amen. Amen. Before I begin today, I'd like to say thank you for welcoming me into the St. Mary's family. I look forward to getting you to know you better over the years and growing and learning with you. So as I begin my sermon today, I'd like to start with some starting points. You can expect to see a travel on a different route. There's going to be a healing and there's gonna be the power of simple prayer. And I'd like to teach you two simple prayers um, from Anne Lamott that you can use daily. She suggests using the first prayer in the morning and the second prayer in the evening. However, I feel like you could use both prayers throughout the day. So they're simple. The first prayer is two words. Help me, help me, help me. And the second prayer is two words. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Today in our gospel, we see Jesus traveling to Jerusalem. Now, when we go on our travels, we might get out our GPS and plug in the coordinates and there might be something like, oh, let's avoid the highways. It's been a long, crazy, busy week. I am tired of sitting in that gridlock and the interstate crawl. Let me take a scenic route. Let me get there as fast as I can, but with the least hassles. But Jesus, if he had a GPS, wouldn't be doing the same thing that we might do. He would probably say, I'm going to Jerusalem. I really don't care how long it takes me to get there. Um, I don't care if I get stuck in traffic and I've got people all around me. Matter of fact, I'd like to have people all around me. And I don't care if I'm going the most scenic route. I want to go the route where others haven't gone. And this is what exactly what Jesus does today. He's traveling between to Jerusalem, between the cities of Samaria and Galilee. He's traveling on the borders, might be the equivalent to the parts of town that we try to avoid today. He's going into the places where other people avoid. And in his journey, he meets 10 men with leprosy. He hears them calling, crying out his name, and it grabs his attention. Jesus, he turns and faces them, sees them, hears them. And they yell out, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never met a person with leprosy in my life before, partially because it's a disease that's curable today. So there are less than 200 cases in the United States in a year. However, if we look, we can find diseases in our history that have the same isolating effects as leprosy. COVID-19 right now isolates people, puts them at a distance. Go back another generation, HIV and AIDS. Go back another generation and polio. These men were isolated, forced to leave their homes, their families, to leave everything behind because they had a disease. Not because of anything they did, just because they contracted a disease. And they yell out to Jesus, help me, help me, help me. And Jesus says, go, present yourself to the priest. Your faith has made you well. Notice the lepers, didn't, the men with leprosy didn't stop and go, wait a minute, Jesus, I'm still seeing some sowers here. Can you try that again? No, they had faith and they went. 10 of them went. Nine took one route and one took a different route. The one that took a different route was a foreigner, a Sumerian 
Sumerians were typically not the favorite people of the Jewish people. He took great risk in coming back. He came back to Jesus and threw himself at Jesus' feet, saying, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Now, the nine that went away and went on that route that everyone was taking, they had a healing. But this man that returned back had more than a healing. He had a resurrection. He had a new life and he realized the power of Jesus and the need to say thank you. He returned back. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. And Jesus tells him, go, your faith has made you well. Now, this summer I worked as a chaplain in a hospital. And the story I'm about to tell you, I'm not proud of. I'm not proud of because I took the route that everyone else was taking. And in the hospital, there are rooms for communicable diseases, and they're marked on the outside with yellow bags with all the protective gear. And at first, I was choosing not to go to these rooms. Choosing at first because I wasn't sure what all the gear on the outside meant, what was the right way to do it. But later, out of fear of not wanting to take something home to my family. And it hit me one day when a friend asked me to cover and go and see a patient with COVID. And I said, no. I said, no, out of fear. And it hit me later that day. I was missing the face of Jesus by saying no. Now, I did a lot of work to get through the fear. I talked with my supervisor. Um, we talked about how there were protections in place and things to do. And sometimes you just have to take that risk. And I started knocking on the doors and going into the rooms that had once scared me. And what I found inside was the face of Jesus. I found people that had been lonely, that I had missed before. I found people of great faith that had so much to teach me. And I found people that were wandering through the desert and needed someone there to be beside them. In those moments, I found the face of God. And I'd like to thank that I showed the face of God to them. So as we prepare to leave today, to go out into the world, to do the work that God has given us to do, I wonder, what are some of the different routes that we might take? Where are places that God is calling us that no one wants to go? Where are places that people are crying out, help me, help me, help me, and will we offer a hand? And where is God calling us to say thank you, thank you, thank you? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen.